when I get over you. I'll get over you. I'll get through you. Oh, I don't think I've done a show forever. Where I didn't play some of Crystal's music, and that's one of my favorite songs there, her first number one hit. And guess what? I have her with us here to join us on the show. Crystal, welcome to KXRB. Well, thank you, Mark. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm super excited. I, it, it's it's kind of uh, uh, a, a different feeling to you know talk with an artist for the very first time after playing their music all these years. I've never talked to you before, so this is a first for me, and I... Uh, Feel very I don't honored. know how we missed that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I thought I'd talk to them all, but I haven't until now. Uh, very honored to talk with you and have you as a guest on the show this morning. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for all the fantastic music. Well, I was just listening to you played I'll Get Over You, and Buddy Spiker did that fiddle on there, and it was just so great. Okay. He's such a great player. And, well, we're uh, gonna... I was in... I was enjoying listening to that. We're going to touch on a few songs here. Uh, you got a lot of them. I was counting up number ones, and there's, uh, well, too many to talk about here in this one uh, conversation. There's like 22 number one hits. There's a few of them I'd like to talk about. One in particular, I do I do have a question on, on one of the uh, musicians. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Thank you for telling us about the fiddle player in that song. That was your first number one, wasn't it? Yes, written by Richard Lee. And that and he, man, by the way, wrote uh, your signature song, too. Yes, he wrote Don't I Make My Brown Eyes Blue. <laughs> great writer and great singer. You know, Nashville is full of fantastic musicians that you'll never hear. I mean, uh, and I'm not saying that mean-wise. It's just that I, I always wonder why aren't they on the radio? Why, you know, there's a lot of things that go into sure. ma- making up a career. Um, one thing about our station here, Crystal, is, uh, we're a little bit different. We do talk a lot about the songwriters and producers and so on. So their names do come up, but you're right. They should be brought out in the spotlight more in the mainstream. Um, say you've got a big show coming up, the big story. You're going to be at the Corn Palace here in our area, Saturday night, August 23rd. And we're excited to have you come here. Yeah, I'll be there. I think the show's at, or my, I'm going on at 7. 7 o'clock. And I'm excited. It's, uh, I, yeah, I love the West. All right. And and uh, it's been a while since I've been to the Dakota, so being in South Dakota, it's going to be great. All right. What do you have in store for that show? Well, we do a little of everything from songs that I hope you remember uh, to new things I'm working on. And uh, I, we have fun. To me, okay. that is the most important part. All right. We're not out there to tell you what to do or you know it's just really having fun with our music with ourselves and and uh, and hoping everybody enjoys it and, and you know I've, I've been to had so many concerts where people know the songs better than I do so <laughs> they All can right. sing along if they want you know concerts you've done some what 3,000 concerts Oh, I've never counted. I, I'd Over hate your to. career. <laughs> I get scared. I think. <laughs> millions and millions of fans. And, uh, you, you, I mean, even yet today when you go out on stage, it's got to be a thrill, no matter where you're at. It is a thrill, and, you know, I still get nervous. You know, I have people say, why are you nervous? And that, that's part of it. <laughs> I, I was just on the Opry the other night, and I'm backstage, like, pacing, and I look around and say, you think I've never done this before? <laughs> right. <laughs> you you know you worded it right. It, that's part of it. Um, yes. You know, about ten minutes ago, I was sitting here daydreaming while a song was playing or commercials were playing, whatever. And I'm thinking, oh my god, I got to talk to Crystal Gale on the radio. I'm nervous about that. And I go, why would I be nervous? I've talked to all the other artists. Why am I nervous? <laughs> like you said, it's part of it. So I was a little bit, but I'm not now. Um, you're at, uh, when you're not touring, by the way, your touring has taken you around the world, hasn't it? You've been in several countries over the years? I've been, yes, I've been all over the world. I know you and, played. And, you know, I'm very fortunate, you know, with my career, I've been able to travel to a lot of places I never would have uh, seen. And, uh, you know, I feel, I do feel very fortunate okay. with uh, having a career that uh, I've made so many wonderful friends all over the world. All right. And it's it's incredible, and, and I think one of the the highlights to me is I've received through the years 
many letters telling me how my music has helped them through something in their life, and that to me means a whole lot. Okay. And it's so much better than winning those awards. I mean, that's great. But, I mean, this is actually reaching out to people and uh, not just saying, hey, I had a number one song. You know, one thing that your music has done that I uh, just uh, very impressed with, it was uh, seemed like a uh, seamless crossover into from country to pop to mainstream and stuff, something that uh, other legends like Eddie Arnold, Patsy Cline, Ray Price, and many others had the knack for doing that. They could cross over seamlessly, and I think that helped uh, pave the way for other artists that came along after you, like Shania and Faith Hill, just to name a couple. Definitely it did. You know, when I started out, uh, and a lot of people you know, would say, oh, you're, you're singing too pop, you know, you're not real country. But, you know, as you look back, you know, Patsy Cline, as you said, Eddie Arnold, I mean, all these singers that had these songs, fair and young, they had songs and, and voices that, that did that crossover. My reason for being a little more on that, uh, the middle of the road, as we called it, side, was my sister told me to quit singing her songs <laughs> and quit singing anything that she would record because we would be compared. And she was right. I never would have made it, I, I don't believe, if I had just did the songs that uh, she would have recorded. Okay, now you're talking about sister, big sister Loretta, who we, yes. we, play, Loretta all, we play all her stuff here, of course. Um, didn't she do a couple things uh, back in the beginning, like, first of all, helping you go with the name Crystal? Yes. My sister, um, I had to change my name because I was on DECA Records, and Brenda Lee was on DECA, and they weren't going to ask her to change it. <laughs> right. Your name is uh, Brenda. So I was had Brenda. to change my name from Brenda, and Loretta saw the name Crystal on the Crystal Hamburger chain that's in okay. the South. Okay. They're, they're good hamburgers. <laughs> All right. And, and yeah, I didn't care what they called me, so I'm named after a hamburger uh, chain. <laughs> all right, well, I never thought of you that way, but uh, the Gale was your middle name. Yes, the Gale okay. was my middle name. Well, Crystal Gale's a great name. And Loretta will give her some more credit here, too. She wrote uh, your debut single, which came out shortly after KXRB came on the air. We signed on in 1969, and I believe it was uh, okay. about this time of year in 1970 that you had your first single. My first single was in 70 with, uh, it's called I Cried the Blue Rat Out of My Eyes. And Loretta wrote that. Yes, and, you know, I just found, you know, I'm, I have an exhibit at the Hall of Fame for um, six months. Yes. And as I was looking for all the things in my career, I found, came across my first demo tape, which oh had that song on it. Oh, wow. I Cried the Blue, because I went in, and um, Wil the Wilbur Brothers which I just love their oh, music. Oh, I love that close harmony. And yeah. and they uh, uh, took me into Surefire, which was their publishing company, and let me record uh, some of their songs from their writers, and that was one of the songs that uh, they wanted to hear me sing. And now, uh, I, I, I think it might have been Teddy helped okay. change the, the melody a little bit on it. Okay. To, to um, I mean, it was, it was a lot better, the melody what he did to it because he was we call him the song doctor <laughs> okay i think i've heard of he that. would take people who wrote songs he helped loretta a lot in her in her beginning of writing songs and and you know he would put it in together better that uh because she was just starting out i've cried the blue right out of my eyes that was the first song in 1970 um uh, yeah and you mentioned the uh the exhibit at the uh, uh country music hall of fame i I believe that opened up in May, wasn't it? And it goes till November? Yes, that was fun. And opened up uh, an exhibit on the life and career of you. And that's got to be a great honor. It is. And when you see things, when you go in there and you're putting things together, and it's like, well, where did the time go? <laughs> that just seemed yesterday I did it. Sure. <laughs> All right. And, you know, there was so much that I, I did in my career, and I'm still doing it in my career. I'm, I'm actually in the studio with my son, Chris. Okay. And we're working on a, an album filled with these wonderful country songs that um, I grew up singing, but never recording. And I don't, I don't know why I didn't record some of them in, at uh, some point, but we're doing that and having a great time. All right. 
I played the song Wrong Road Again. That came about four years into your career, first time breaking in the top tens, and then we just played I'll Get Over You. That was the first number one, as we mentioned. Uh, let's get to the signature song, Don't Make My Brown Eyes Blue. I believe that song there opened the world's eyes to you. That particular song, as we said earlier, was written by Richard Lee, and Richard, from uh, my first the song of his, which was I'll Get, I'll Get Over You, he hadn't had a whole lot of cuts. And Alan went to his house and said, okay, I'm going to come over and listen to some of the songs you're writing. And he played some songs, and Alan said, do you have anything else? He says, well, I have one other song we're going to send to California for an artist out there. And he said, well, play it for me anyway. And he played Don't It Make My Brown Eyes Blue. And Alan looked at him and said, you're not sending that song anywhere. <laughs> so we almost lost that song. And I'm, I'm, you know, it was just, you never know. Uh, to me in the business, it's a lot of luck, a lot of good people behind you uh, to make song. it in this business. And that was just a, a little stroke of luck that Alan went there. And Alan Boy. is such a, a great song person. And you know, Alan um, produced a lot of Garth's, most of Garth's records. That song and crossed... Musical John Years and Cross the Oceans, and I believe it got Richard his second CMA Song of the Year trophy. It, it was in the um, one of the most played songs of the decade, um, the past decade, which that was an honor. It was in the top ten. Help me out on this one. You talked about a fiddle player in that song, uh, I'll Get Over You. How about the song we're talking about, Don't Make My Brown Eyes Blue? Was it Hargus? Pig Robbins playing the uh, piano, playing the keyboard in that song? It was. Okay, and, I uh, thought it was. We had just, and uh, I had forgotten recently, and uh, it just came back to me that um, Charles Cochran, who's a fantastic piano player, he had been playing on most of my records, and he had gotten sick, and he couldn't do it, and he asked Pig to come in and, and do the session. And, you know, it's it's... You never know when something's going to uh, be, who's going to be the creative person, and Pig was just fantastic with that. What an arrangement, course, you know. He went into the Country Music Hall of Fame uh, yeah. a few years back, and he's been a part of so many big songs. Yeah, I was there for his, uh, when they, they made him uh, in the Hall of Fame, and uh, it was just incredible. And I, I sang Brown Eyes and, and said a few words, and but, I mean, he did Behind co Closed Doors, the piano yes. on uh, on that uh, particular song. Charlie Rich's uh, song. And yes, Charlie Rich. Even back in the 60s, the song of the year with David Houston, Almost Persuaded, he played in that oh, one, too. That. So, I mean, I went through a list of songs that he was involved in, and I was sure that uh, yours was one of them. Yes. All right. Well, thank you for answering that. Uh, you've won so many awards. I know that uh, those are all important to you from... Sweeping the Academy of Country Music Awards uh, three-time top female vocalist. We could go on and on with all the American Music Awards and uh, CMA Awards and so on and Grammys. I got something else I want to ask you before you go. Your love for the littlest of listeners, kids. I know you've done some work with kids. Maybe that hasn't been talked about before on the radio. I love um, doing things with Make-A-Wish. I've done... Uh a lot of uh, things with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And, and I've also done, you know, a children's album, a lullabies album. Uh, and, I, you know, I was on Sesame Street <laughs> right. singing with Big Bird. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I sing, um, I did the Muppet Show. You know, it's, it's great to be able to do shows that, uh, and I love it when people do, I uh, think actors and actresses do movies that you can actually sit down and watch with your children. It's so hard, you you know. You have kids around. I think, well, let's put on a movie. And it's like, okay, what can we put on? <laughs> <laughs> I watch an awful lot of Disney Junior with my son. Uh, <laughs> I, it's what he, he likes to watch. So, but I you love, love Disney. Work. Now my grandson's okay. ten, and I could never get him to watch the Disney. I wanted to watch them. <laughs> All right. He wanted. He you know his he liked the short films. You know, with the half hour to forty five minutes. You know, at the most. All right. And he wanted real people. <laughs> now, but he does love SpongeBob. So. All right, so you love being with kids. You love entertaining kids. And uh, with that, you're, when you're not touring, you're at home at Nashville. What else do you do with your, you know, if you do have some spare time, what do you do? 
Well, a lot of it is spending it with family, uh, doing some traveling, and uh, uh, you know, I, like I said, we've been in the studio working together on a couple different projects. My son graduated from Belmont uh, University here in, in the music and engineering program, and you know, it's it's neat to see it being passed around uh, the music uh, with going down to the family, and he loves it. So you know, we'll see what happens there with him and. You know, having, you know, I have to be out on the road. I enjoy, enjoy being home, getting together uh, with family and friends. But, you know, it's all working together, everything. Okay. So when you get back out on the road, it's like, wow, I needed to get out here and, and entertain because I I enjoy it. And when I do feel that uh, I'm not having the fun that I should, then that's when you put your feet up and say, okay, I'm not going to go out there anymore. Okay. Well, Crystal, thank you for your time this morning. I could go on and on talking with you. What a lovely conversation. Well, thank you. I appreciate everything. All right. We uh, love playing your songs every day. The audience uh, get a lot of requests for your music and so on. 22 number ones, uh, three platinum albums. You were the first female country artist to achieve platinum album sales. That was a, a great honor. I'm I'm honored with all the things in my career, and that uh, I've never really kept up the okay. How many albums do you have? How many this and that? Because I just enjoy going out there and singing, and not the statistics. <laughs> all right. Well, one thing I'm waiting for, and I have no doubt that you will be one day inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. There's no question that'll be coming. Just a matter of uh, time. There, you're already in oh, some other. Hall of Fames like the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame and Christian Music Hall of Fame. Crystal, we'll uh, look forward to your show coming up the 23rd here in uh, South Dakota at Mitchell's Corn Palace. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you for your time this morning on KXRB. My best. All right. Crystal Gale, what a great uh, guest here on the show.